In my last video, I shared how I use GPTs for podcasting, and today I want to share how I use them to clone myself. Now, I hear a lot of people talk about why prompting isn't an important skill, and here's why I think that is completely the wrong message and why you should never listen to that advice unless, of course, you want to be replaced by AI. Remember, the person doing the creating is the person doing the learning is also the person who is building their skills and their mindset. Hi everyone, I'm Saba, the CEO of Designing Schools, and on this channel, I help you learn the skills and mindsets that are going to give you a human advantage. So hit subscribe for insights and strategies for how to be irreplaceable in a world with AI. Now, we all find ourselves bogged down by tasks that consume way too much of our time or frustrated by problems that seem unavoidable or that we feel like we have no choice but to kind of power through whether we like them or not. But what if it didn't have to be that way? What if we did have a choice to not have to do those mundane, annoying tasks? In the world of AI, these challenges and frustrations are not just obstacles to be ignored, they are opportunities to innovate. And this is an approach that I use in my workshops to help people think through how to go from problem, frustration, to opportunity. And it's a method called design thinking that turns these pain points into creative solutions. And today I'm going to share one of my biggest pain points with you. In my workshops, I absolutely love being interactive, hands-on learning, all that good stuff. But with 100 plus participants, which is usually the norm, it's really impossible for me to engage individually with everyone. Even if I have a smaller group of say just 10 people, imagine me just spending five minutes one-on-one, -on -one, that's almost an hour. And this is where the power of design thinking and AI can come together to help me turn a frustration or a challenge into an opportunity. So I actually ended up creating a GPT that would act as my digital clone. It was designed to be able to guide participants through the different workshop exercises as if I was there with each one of them. Now we hear this all the time, right? Using AI tools like ChatGPT to personalize learning for every individual and making somebody feel like you're having that one-on-one -on -one conversation with them. And this is exactly what I'm going to show you today because it has worked beautifully in all of my workshops. Now remember, the key with GPTs is to focus on one specific task. So in this case, I am building a GPT that is going to walk people through through my Spark framework. And if you've been here before, you know that Spark is all about sharing your situation, your problem, your aspiration, the results you're looking for, and the last, my favorite part, Kismet, asking ChatGPT for some ideas and things that are missing. Now, you might hear the Spark framework and be like, oh, okay, situation, problem, aspiration, result. But it's really not that simple, and here's why. There is really nobody asking us every day, what are your hopes and dreams? What problems can I solve for you today? And as a result, what happens is, because we're not used to having those conversations, we really struggle to articulate our problems and our frustrations that we want solved, what our hopes and dreams are. So this is really a muscle that needs to be practiced. And we also know that being able to clearly articulate this is very, very important for AI tools like ChatGPT so that they can give us better results. But one of the biggest problems I was having in my workshops was people were really struggling to kind of articulate their challenges. They were struggling to articulate their hopes and dreams and their aspirations, or it was just really like a low level. It's like, we can dream bigger than that, but I wasn't able to be there to kind of prompt and to guide and to help people really kind of flesh them out. And that is where my GPT comes into play. So I've talked a lot about the GPT GPT, let me actually show you how the Spark framework can help you bring it to life. And then I'm going to take you through how I built my own and more importantly, how you can build your own GPT to tackle specific challenges in your work or your personal life. I want you to first imagine the possibilities when you can clone your expertise, your knowledge, or your teaching style. It's not just about efficiency always. It's sometimes about expanding your impact and bringing your unique insights to more people than you could have done as just a single individual. So like, let me go ahead and show you how we actually do this. So this is my Spark GPT that I created, like I shared, to help guide people through using the Spark prompting framework without really having to do a lot of the work upfront. 
So these actually are four prompts that I have put into here. So one of the first ones might be like, okay, well, what is Spark and how can it help me? So you can literally start just by asking that question. And one of the things that I love about this is not only will it direct you to my website, but it's actually going to give you a full overview of what it is. So you can imagine this is the classic workshop example, right? Where people are like, oh, can you tell me the directions again? Oh, what was that thing that you said again? And instead of me having to have to repeat myself or maybe the person doesn't even ask the question, but they're wondering in the back of their head, they can literally come in here and they can use this and get all the information they need. And it's literally as if you were right next to me. So it's already giving them some ideas about how Spark can help them. And remember, these are all the things that I've programmed in here. These are all the things that I've told it to do. And basically, one of the biggest instructions that I gave it is that you should never leave a conversation hanging. Always, always, always give somebody a prompt. Encourage them to continue the conversation just in case they don't continue the conversation. You be the one to proactively continue that conversation. So whereas before, somebody would have to like construct the whole Spark, now they can just come in here and be like I'm an English teacher and I am really nervous with AI especially when it comes to cheating I want to do a small test lesson with my students next week we are starting Macbeth how can I create an innovative lesson while also making sure my students have original work and are engaged. I only want to do this for two days and I have 50 minutes each day. So now basically what it's going to do is come in here and basically create the spark for you. Now you can see over here, the person did not really complete all of the different steps of the Spark framework. But what's amazing is this will actually do it for you. And this to me is such a fantastic way of being able to model for somebody what the Spark can look like without having them to put in a lot of thinking up front. To be completely honest, Spark is not the easiest thing to do because it requires a lot of critical thinking. Like I shared earlier, we are not used to really analyzing why we do what we do, what the challenges are that arise, what our hopes and dreams are in that situation, especially when it just comes to like our day-to-day -day lesson planning or whatever day-to-day -day task it is that you might be doing. So over here, basically you can see, you actually can come in here and actually edit this. So if you're like, um, wait a minute, that's not my problem. The results I'm looking for are actually this it then prompts you to get more specific about what you want. But let's just say we're okay with this. We can come over here, we can see we've got a lesson plan now built out for us just for something we can do within two days. Again, as always, you're gonna wanna go back and forth with this, really interrogate it, but let me take you behind the scenes now of how I actually made this. As always, you do need ChatGPT+. We're gonna come over here to the Explore tab. When we come over to Explore, we're gonna do Create GPT. Now, once we're here, we're gonna follow the same things. If you watched my last YouTube video, I walked you through how I did this for my podcast show notes. So I'm gonna come in here now and say, I want to create a facilitation tool that will guide people through a workshop exercise that I call Spark. And now it's gonna run through the same thing. We're gonna do title, image, it's always gonna run through the first couple of things. And again, there's no coding, no nothing at all involved. We're simply just using natural language to be able to give instructions to this AI tool for what it is that we want it to do. Now, like I shared before, the more specific you are with the task, the better I find it performs. So it's like, okay, great. We're gonna call this the Spark Guide. Again, for purposes of this, I am not going to really argue with this tool. Otherwise, normally I do do quite a bit of back and forth. But over here, it's going to go ahead now generate that title for me. It's now going to go ahead and create a profile picture. Again, you can go back and forth as much as you want until you get to a place where you're really happy. But for this purpose, I just want to go ahead and show you how it is that we actually go about creating this. So I'm going to say, yes, this is great. And let's move on to show you guys how we do the rest of it. So you'll see over here now, it's gonna start prompting me now that it knows the genre of GPT or the type of tool it is that I'm trying to create, it's going to now prompt me and it's gonna say over here, you know, how do you want this tool to act? What are some of the behaviors and characteristics that you want it to have? 
So you can see over here, it has generated a lot of different questions for me to consider. But one of the things I might want to say over here is I want this tool to be to be very empathetic and kind and to always be the one who continues the conversation. Sometimes people who are new to ideas don't always know what to ask. So we want to be super supportive and kind and encouraging and always really motivating to get people super enthusiastic about possibilities and to help them overcome their fears. Now, one of the things I am going to need to tell it after it's kind of gone through all the different questions it's asking me is to actually tell it what Spark is. So one of the things I would say over here is I have a very specific method that I use called Spark. Here is what it is, and you should always help people create these right at the start. So here we go. Kind of we put that in there. And we can go ahead and we can share that. Now, it is going to really encourage you to try it, but feel free to keep giving it as much information as you need. It's definitely a great idea to come over, to test, to see the different things. But I just wanted to give you one more example. I did this in the podcast one in my previous video, but I really just wanted to give you guys one more example of just how easy these are to build. But what's not so easy is really taking the time to really reflect on what it is you want to create, why you want to create it, and what those steps and nuances are going to be. Like what would that experience be like of somebody having to do something that you normally do, but you're not there. So it's going to have to know all the different pieces and all the different things. It is just like onboarding somebody onto our team to take on a task or think about something it is that you outsource. So as always, remember you can come over to the configure and you can change anything it is that you need up. You can come over here. This is your testing ground. And when you are ready, you can come over here and save. And of course, when you are done, always give it to other people as well for feedback. I found that to be super helpful. There have definitely been people who have caught different mistakes. But overall, I hope you have fun creating your GPTs and really seeing just how much potential there is with these AI technologies. Now, examples like these, like I always share, are going to be what make you irreplaceable. And the more you practice on your own you know, professional scenarios, the more you practice with your own use cases, the more inspiration and expertise you're gonna develop to help other people as well. So comment below and let us know, how are you using GPTs? What ideas did you get? Or what GPTs are you curious about building, but you're not really quite sure how to get started? And maybe I'll include your question in my next video.